Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading. Welcome back. You're watching Traders Corner and joining me this evening is Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner and also a new father. Garth, <laughs> I think the, uh, some of the financial community know that you had a little baby boy last week and I just wanted to congratulate you and how's everything going? It's fantastic. Most amazing experience ever. I'm very happy. A very proud dad. <laughs> well, great to hear. Awesome. Um, Garth, um, but starting off with the market, are you as happy with the market as you are with your new infant? Uh, if we talk about the open trades, Grindr and Cecil. Yeah, I'm happy with both of them. They're both doing quite well for us. Uh, they've been chugging along nicely. So we're going to have a look at both of these trades and review them and just check where we are, where we're at with them. Um, I'm happy to hold on to both of them at this stage. But let's have a quick look at both of these trades and see what the story is. Okay. Um, yeah, Grinrod was the first trade that we did. We did this a couple of weeks back and the chart of it is up on the screen at the moment. Now, what we had over here was uh, obviously a rising trend. You can see that stock trending higher with a nice pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And we had an ascending triangle pattern over there with uh, lateral overhead resistance at about 21 Rand 50. Mm -hmm. Now, what you typically do with these patterns is you take the height of that triangle at its broadest point, and then you project it up from where the breakout happens. And then that, in this case, it gives a target of 24 Rand 50 following that breakout that's happened through the top of the triangle structure. Now, what we did for our portfolio was we went long of 4,300 CFDs at a price of 21 Rand, and I'm using a stop loss here at 19 Rand 50. Uh, if we look at our risk to reward ratio, the little red and green blocks are illustrating the risk to reward ratio there. Basically, the red block indicates the risk, which is the difference between our entry price and our stop loss level, and the green block indicates the potential reward if this share was to trade up to our target price of 24.50. Um, as you can see at the moment, it's trading around about 22 Rand 50. So it's getting there. It mm -hmm. still looks good to me. I'm still very happy to keep holding this trade. We might need to be a little bit more patient with it before it gets to our ultimate target price. But for the time being, I'm still confident that this is working and I'm happy yeah. to stick with the trade. Because actually it, it, it leapt out of the blocks and you did really well almost as you put that trade on. As you say, it's now it's kind of like slowed down a bit, yeah. but you're happy to stick in there. I'm happy. You know, if you look at that trading action, you can see that it's, it's making nice moves higher, then it consolidates for a couple of days, then it shoots higher again and it's now consolidating again. But overall, you know, there's still a very clear pattern of rising lows and rising highs here. So to me, it all looks good and we're going to stick with this trade. Okay, what about Sassel, which was also a fairly recent trade? What's going on there? Yes, we did this one two weeks ago. So uh, what I really liked here, well, a number of things, but from a technical standpoint, we had a nice steady upward trend, which joins the lows from April of this year. And in fact, that line goes back even further than on this chart. Um, we had an area of overhead resistance, which joined all the pre previous highs on this chart. And basically what I was looking for was ultimately a breakout through, those, through that resistance. And we decided to buy for our portfolio. We bought off that uptrend when the stock pulled back a little bit. So we bought at 425 Rand. We set a stop loss at 408 Rand. Now what you typically do here, or in, in this case, what I see is a bit of an inverted head and shoulders over there. It's a bit skew. But the stock now has actually broken out through the neckline of that pattern. And that, therefore, you take the, the, the height of that head structure, as it were, and you project that up to get a target level. And in this case, it projects a target of 475 Rand. Mm. So I'm happy uh, with where it is at the moment. It's been trading up towards 450, thereabouts. It's looking good. Um, this is, a, a, again, a great pattern with the you know, rising bottoms and rising highs. Uh, a good looking setup. We're likely to see results out of Sassel in the near term uh, and, and for the full year, which mm -hmm. I suspect will probably be quite good and might even catch some of the analysts by surprise. Yeah. So looks good. Trading action remains positive and I'm happy to stay long of this stock for the time being. Okay. So it's been quite busy for the portfolio and you're putting on a new trade this week. and. It's a pairs trade, which I, 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 I'm not sure if we did one right at the beginning of the Traders Corner concept back, what, three or four years ago, or if we've never done a pairs trade, but certainly it's not, um, it's not something that you do often for the portfolio. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you're looking at this week. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pairs trade. You're right. I don't know whether we've ever done one of these. And if we did, it would have been much earlier on in the mm. show's life back in 2009, maybe. 
So we haven't, really, anyway, it's not something that a lot of the viewers will be familiar with. So hopefully it's new, it's interesting, and it's educational. Now what a pairs trade is, is where you take two stocks and you pair them off against each other by mm -hmm. going long on one stock and short on another stock. Okay. Um, typically what you'd want to do is look for stocks that have some sort of a correlation or are in similar sectors that have similar drivers. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at things like you know, Impala Platinum and Anglo Platinum or some of the banks, maybe Absa and Nedbank, mm. or um, that uh -huh. sort of thing. Goldfields old, and Anglo Gold. Yeah, or, or Sunlum and Old Mutual. Okay. The, um, so the, the, the pairs trade that we're looking at for this week's show is in the telecoms space, and we're looking at MTN and Vodacom. And uh, we're going to be going long of uh, MTN and short of Vodacom. Now, I'll have a look at the charts of each of these two stocks, but also just to talk to the fundamentals slightly. I mean, we've got a chart of MTN up on the screen at the moment, and you can see this stock generally is in a, in a fairly strong trading pattern. There is a rising trend there. You can see a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Mm. There is a fairly well-defined upward trend that comes through the, the, the recent lows there since April. And that upward trend would come through at around about 172 Rand. Now, the stock has been weak over the last day or so, but particularly today because uh, there was an announcement that came out after the market closed mm. yesterday, which said that the CFO, of MTN had resigned and that the CEO from Nigeria would be filling the shoes of the CFO <laughs> in South Africa. Right, a lot Nazir of Patel is his name. That's right, <laughs> lots of acronyms there. Anyway, um, the fact is that the market seems to have taken this slightly negatively in the short term. I think there's a little bit of a concern that there's maybe going to be a vacuum of leadership in Nigeria, which is an important region for MTN, etc. My sense here is that we've got a bit of an overreaction. In the, way, in the way the MTN share price has reacted. Because it's come down, at, well, at one stage of the stage, it was down about 3%. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where it's going to close, but yeah. it, it, as you say, it, it's quite a sharp move. Yeah. Um, the market just doesn't like these kind of announcements where all of a sudden the CFO resigns because he's under investigation. And we've d tried to do some digging today. We phoned people at MTN, we phoned a couple of the analysts, and no one actually seems to have a clue what's going on. So this is quite curious. Normally, you know, there's, some sources will tell you, you know, uh, or something or other, but yeah. there seems to be a, a complete incomprehension and radio silence here. So, Look, markets say. don't like uncertainty, and that's what they've got here. They've got an element of uncertainty, but certainly from what I've seen, they w they've indicated that this is unlikely to affect earnings. You know, it's, it's one yeah. guy that's resigned, so it, it's unlikely to affect earnings. Whether there's a deeper story behind it remains to be seen. But for the time being, my sense here is that we've got a little bit of an overreaction on this MTN share price with it having come down the way it has. Um, so from that perspective, I think there's a short-term buying opportunity in MTN, okay. and that, that's the MTN side of this equation, where we're going to be going long. Now the other side of this equation, the other end of this pairs trade, is in Vodacom, and this is where we're looking to go short, we're selling Vodacom short. Uh, and over here, if you have a look, you can see there's various different pivot points in the past, where this sort of 117 Rand area is quite significant and it's been resistance now over the last couple of days and we've seen the stock coming down from that level. You can also see that it's very, very overbought on the stochastic oscillator over there. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to then short Vodacom against this. So what I want to do in this next chart now is plot the relative of MTN versus Vodacom. So what this shows you is basically uh, MT, uh, it, it's, it's a relative chart with, with with Vodacom being the base security and MTN being compared to it. Okay. So what you can see over here is that there's, a, there's a, a weakening trend over here. What this implies is that Vodacom is underperforming MTN. Because in order to get this, this chart, this plotting, mm -hmm. you take the share price of Vodacom and you divide it by the price of MTN. Okay. Right? And the, the, the numbers on the right and the left here that you can't really see because they're so small, they, this level where we're at now is approximately 0.65. All right. So if you take the share price, let's just sl whip through these slides a bit. If, there it is. If you take the share price of, um, of Vodacom being around about 113 Rand and 25 cents, uh, and the share price of Vodacom being 175 Rand, you divide those two by each other, and you can see that the ratio today is 0.6463. Mm. All right. Now, if you look at that chart and you look at that resistance line that I've put on there, you can see that there's quite clearly a resistance on the relative chart at 0 0.65. Okay. So from a, this point of view, I would say technically this is an area where you would look to sell the spread. In other words, you're going to sell Vodacom and mm. buy MTN against it. 
And that's what I'm doing for the portfolio today. So we're looking to sell the spread at around about an area of 0.65. And then I'm going to set a stop loss if we were to see this spread trading up above 0.68. Okay, Garth, um, this is time for me to ask a stupid question. <laughs> um, because obviously on the market, it doesn't trade at 0.65 or 0.68. So then how do you actually enact the trade? So what you do is there's actually two legs to the trade. Okay. You've, got to, you've got to physically buy MTN, and then you've got to physically short Vodacom. But at a certain it. points for both stocks. Yeah, you've okay. got to work out the, the price of each share when you trade it relative to each other, such that the ratio is more or less around about this 0.65 area. Okay. If we have a look at the mechanics of the trade, it'll, it'll explain it a little bit more carefully. So we're selling the spread. In this case, we've managed to do it at 0.6463. Yeah. How do we make that up? Right, well, what it, what it is, is I've bought 1,000 CFDs of MTN at 175 Rand and 30 cents. Okay. Notice there that the notional value of this position is 175,000 Rand. Okay. Against that then, I go short of Vodacom. I'm going short of 1,545 CFDs here at a price of 113 Rand 30. Notice there that the notional value again is approximately 175,000 Rand. Is uh, this key that, that the values of both have to be yeah. equivalent? It's very, very important because you, 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 you're effectively taking a bet of the one share outperforming the other or the one underperforming the other, yeah. whichever way you want to phrase it. But it's important that the notional value of each leg of the trade is the same. Okay. And that's why you'll notice that we've got different number of shares here. We've done 1,000 MTN and we've done 1,545 Vodacom. You need to make sure that that notional value is equal. Okay. Because if you've got a bigger notional value on the one side, then it's lopsided and then it's not a proper pairs trade. Right. So it's very important that you get that aspect of it right. And also what you need to also just keep in mind here is that by doing this, you're effectively neutralizing the market risk in this trade. You know, if the entire market was to collapse and crash tomorrow, you're going to be long on the one stock and short on the other. So you kind of hedged to some extent. All you're doing is you're taking a bet of one stock outperforming the other. Mm. And, um, and it is important, but they, they're paired off against each other. Now, we're setting our stop loss at a level of 0 0.68, which implies that the risk on this trade is 5,259 Rand or there and thereabouts. And if we look at that in terms of the percentage of our portfolio, it comes in at around about 1.5% of the value of our account. Remember that we've got 342,000 Rand available as trading capital in our account now. And this, this works out to approximately 1.5% of yeah. that. Slightly less than 2%. Is there any intention behind that or is it just that's the way it's worked out? It's just the way that it's worked out. You know, I think my initial thinking here was that I based it all off of 1,000 shares in MTN. And then I did the rest of my calculations <laughs> okay. backwards from there. And that's just kind of how it's worked out. Um, our target for this is for, the, for that spread to move down back to 0 0.59. Okay. All right which would imply that there's a potential profit, if that happens, a potential profit of about 10,500 Rand. Okay. So in terms of risk to reward ratio, the, the risk reward, reward ratio is one to two in this case. And Gus, just lastly on this trade, is there um, a fee implication for, for the legs of the trade that you do? There is. So this is one of the disadvantages of doing a pairs trade, is that you've, you've got more legs of the trade to pay for. Obviously, okay. every time you trade, you're going to pay a commission to your broker. Now, in this instance, to enter the trade, we've done a long and a short, which we pay a commission on each. Yeah. And eventually to close that trade out, we're going to have to okay. close that. And so ultimately you end up with four transactions at the end of the day. And unfortunately you have to pay for all four of them. Okay. So it does become a bit expensive from a commission's point of view. Right. Which is my, maybe why we haven't done that many pairs trades. Yeah. So, so that's the trade for this week. Garth, what does the portfolio then look like? All right, Actually. it looks like this. So these are the open trades that we've got at the moment. We're still long of Grinrod and Sassel, and we've just done this pairs trade in mm -hmm. MTN and Vodacom. Our portfolio is sitting just over 342,000 Rand, so up 36% for the year to date. Which is an extra 4% or thereabouts since yeah. I think we last clocked in with you. Mm -hmm. um, and Garth, then to end off with upcoming courses and also maybe uh, um, something new on your website. Yeah. Okay, so my, my upcoming courses, I'm doing an Understanding CFDs course in Johannesburg on the 8th of August and I've got a high probability trading course on the 17th of August. Um, the CFDs course is a two-hour evening course, and the high probability trading course is a full-day course on a Saturday. Anybody that's interested in attending one of these, please email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll send you the details. And then lastly, um, 
I'm, I've got a new, I've decided to be generous. And uh, my website, <laughs> traderscorner.co. It must be that fatherly feeling coming <laughs> maybe out. Maybe it is, yeah. Maybe my nurturing <laughs> side is coming out. But, um, you know, I, I, you've always had to pay for a subscription to my website. It's 279 Rand a month, typically. What I've done is I've introduced a free seven-day trial. So okay. anybody that wants to come along, have a look at Traders Corner, have a look at the type of analysis we publish, have a look at the information, the consensus, earnings forecasts and news and all that sort of thing that's available. It's a very useful tool for if, if you're a short-term trader. There's the link over there, free seven-day trial. Click on it and you can sign up for seven days and see what we offer. Okay, so a little punt for Traders Corner. Um, Garth, we have to leave it there. Uh, thanks as always for joining us on the show and congrats again. That's Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading.